Coming into this, my opinion of Mexico was a little jaded. I think if you grow up fishing in Southern California, at some point or another, you're gonna go to Baja. At one point, I really didn't think we were gonna make it. Oh, man. Oh. This is still a hidden gem. I was going on a trip. I was gonna see things I hadn't seen before. Is we like to target that king of the reef. And in this part of the country, the king of the reef is the grouper. Big groupers fire me up. You got him, you got him, Rush, you got him, Rush. For groupers, this is the place. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate the largest sport fishing website in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. When I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession. And we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. <laughs> we explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Why don't you see what you can figure out there? Or if you've got the time while you're waiting, maybe go ask those guys, tell them we got a real big boat coming through and we need to get our import permits. Cause if we don't get them there tonight, we got to wait till it opens in Ensenada tomorrow. Or I think we can get them at Guerrero Negro. I'm not hundred percent sure though. Well, I guess let's start loading whatever we want to stash in the boat, in the boat. And then whatever we're gonna put in the truck, in the truck. The thing I like most about Baja trips that we do is the adventure. And, and that's really true for a lot of the trips that we do anywhere but Baja kind of brings its own blend of adventure. There was a lot of excitement. I mean, I even had a little bit of anxiety. I felt for the first time in a long time, I was, I was going on a trip. I was gonna see things I hadn't seen before. You know what I can't get over is the landscape. I mean, coming from where I'm coming from, it's so flat, totally different landscape. Yeah, every one of you guys that comes from Florida just cannot believe the landscape. I've been fortunate enough to travel and fish in a lot of different places. For me, going to a resort, fishing from 9 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon, that has pretty much zero appeal. We're always looking for something different, something cool, something unique. And, you know, Baja offers that around every corner. Coming down here to Baja, there was no script. Ali said we're going to jump in a truck from my house in San Diego and drive 450 miles down the Baja Peninsula. This is some windy stuff, but you can see on the side, there's really not much in the way of danger. Right. Um, here it's a little thin, but a lot of this has got that like kind of rain gutter looking deal. Uh -huh. It's not that bad. There we'll, we'll get a few spots that, I mean, you're basically hanging a wheel off a cliff on the right side. Okay, you can go wide on this next curve, you're clear. Trailering down here with the width of the boat, you know, we want a little bit of extra insurance. Fortunately for us, we've got a good friend in Oscar who lives in San Quentin, and he's always there to help. For this trip, that help, you know, came in the form of having a pilot car out in front of us. Oh yeah, I couldn't imagine doing it without the pilot car and this big wide boat behind us. Yeah, you'll notice I'll run right down the middle of the road when there's no cars around, like, no need to even stress it around the turns, you know? Okay, you're clear on the bottom. While that doesn't seem that important, with a lot of these blind curves and the big semis and the big buses, having somebody on the radio to give you a heads up that, hey, there's a bus coming or you're clear or whatever, giving you that kind of uh, foresight around the next turn, it's everything to me. Well, minus the uh, steep drop-offs, it's like the Keys were, you know, back in the 60s. I, I mean, would imagine. It's a little freaky. The roads being super narrow. All the semi-trucks. Oh. You know, I've done a lot of bucket list trips. This one definitely was one I wanted to knock off. Seen pictures and heard stories of these broomtail grouper. I think if you grow up fishing in Southern California, at some point or another, you're gonna go to Baja. It's really the Wild West for us as far as it relates to fishing. So tell me a little bit about your boy Julio. How'd you meet him? Um, I met Julio like six or seven years ago. In every town where we fish down here, there's always a guy. And, and I always joke about it that we've got a Mexican in every port. So Julio just, the guy loves to fish. I mean, he is just a nut about it. You need anything in Baja, anywhere, and he'll make it happen with a phone call. 
So he's pretty much the guy. He's, he's got it wired. Did you talk about local knowledge? He is the local knowledge. You need that support. There isn't a Walmart within 500 miles of this place. There is not a Home Depot. Uh, about all you got down here is a bunch of tire shops and some really good tacos. Dude, this is, as our friends say, no bueno. Oh, man. So we got the crack in the cross member. I think there's too much weight forward on this trailer. We definitely aren't gonna make it much further on that tire. No, we gotta find a tire shop. This is this is a dead cause here. So we got two spares. That'll put us down to one. We're halfway there. I mean, we keep pressing, I say. We don't have a choice really, do we? At one point, I really didn't think we were gonna make it. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Andro's Boat Works. Adventure never ends. The Florida Keys and Key West come as you are. And BDOutdoors.com. Reel down to the water until it's ripping drag. BDOutdoors.com is your one-stop source for all things fishing, boating, and outdoors. Stay dialed in with current fishing reports, breaking news, and our extensive library of how-to tips. You'll learn about rigging, fish cleaning, boat maintenance. We have recipes for seafood and game, cutting-edge videos, and gear giveaway contests. It's all free at BDOutdoors.com. Good. If it was easy, it probably wouldn't be worth doing because everybody else would be down here. I don't know what would cause that. It's just in the one spot. Is the brake locked up? We're so lucky we made it here. I know. We bust our ass to make these trips happen. I mean, it was pretty sweet that the diesel tank cracked in the bed of the truck. <laughs> Ruined my brand new bag. All my underwear got friggin' diesel in them. Right? Hey, Rush, let's do a little check. Check out the trailer, see how things are going. Oh, by the way, the cross member is torn out of the side of the effing trailer. What else could possibly go wrong? Don't let's ask. take a look at the tires. Don't ask. Oh, man. Ah, damn. Not to mention, we're running a day and a half behind, or a yeah, day well, behind. Day behind, too. So everything's going pretty much silky smooth at this point. Mm -hmm. Can you just Google map us from here to. This is us right now, and this is where we want to go. That's our final destination? Yep. No, down here. That one traveled about halfway. Let's roll. It's a long ride on very narrow roads. That boat's almost 10 feet wide, and I believe the road might be 10 foot, two inches wide. And there's some stretches here where you're gonna go 200 miles without a fuel stop. Now, if you're not towing, no big deal. Any car or truck will go three, 400 miles without fuel. Now, you put a boat that weighs 15,000 pounds behind a diesel truck and all your equipment and all that stuff, you got a plan. So 230, wasn't just 227 or something? Yeah. 125 plus 30, about 145, we've got about 185 worst case, so with 40 extra, we're definitely gonna take fuel. Watch your feet, just don't get them under the tank if you don't have to. It was it was definitely sketchy getting that boat down here. And a boat is like another tool in your yeah. toolbox, but this one is the one that's an extension of your arm. Having your own boat or a boat very similar to yours like we did, it's it's a game changer. I really enjoy traveling to fish because I like the unknown. I like meeting new people. I really do enjoy the new scenery, new techniques. And I'm telling you, if anybody can get anything done, it's this guy. This is still a hidden gem. Most people have no idea what kind of fishing is here. It's so good. The run is so short. 
Well, I hate to state the obvious, but it's not exactly that easy to get to. No, that's the hard part. Yeah, and that's why it is still a hidden gem. And most of those are little hidden gems, it's, it's for all, a reason. This is all about the trip, yeah, for sure. Once everything comes together, you've got the boat in the water, maybe a couple of blown tires in the back, and it's really worthwhile. I mean, one look at this scenery and everything this place has to offer, you know, and especially being able to share that with a new guy makes all that hard work worthwhile. Janos are just on the, on the 25 mile bank, on the 22 mile bank, and on the Polaris. Polaris has been good with, um, with uh, Wahoos, but uh, it's slowed down lately. I mean, water has been, uh, you know, cooling off. I think it will be worth it to, to try and get some, um, some big groupers down there. We, we, we have so many places to fish. Local knowledge is all about leveraging the experience of somebody who does this every day. Well, we have a sardine smell. It smells different sizes, too. Uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, worth a try. Now, in the case of grouper fishing here in Abre Ojos, it's about finding a dude who knows this fishery better than anybody. Grouper fishing on the Pacifico Norte side of uh, Baja California. We have basically two species of uh, groupers. We have the broomtails and we have the gold groupers. No, but fish is there, you know, I mean, we know how to get it. Coming down here, my idea of Julio was kind of like the Mexican Texas Ranger. As I met him and started talking to him, I realized that he was kind of like the godfather of this little community. One of the things that makes this place so great for me and keeps me coming back is the people. I mean, this place really defines that extended family. Introducing a revolutionary concept in outboards, a choice. Now with the Evan Rood E-Tech G2, you can choose unrivaled performance, superior fuel economy, and the cleanest combustion outboard on the planet. Choose from hundreds of color combinations to perfectly match your boat. And choose five years or 500 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Experience the power of choice at chooseyouretech.com. We're just getting started. We lost a day getting ready to go. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Must Add Hooks. Defining fishing hooks since 1877. And by Aftco, the American fishing tackle company. This area is a very remote area and is located on the Pacific side of Baja California Peninsula, about halfway down to Los Cabos from Tijuana. You know, in, in my opinion, I think that the most important part of your game is gonna be bait. Whether it be grouper fishing, bottom fishing, sail fishing, tuna fishing, that presentation of the bait, the kind of bait you're using, it's gonna be a game changer. It's a giant California sand bass. You wanna know what the nickname for these things is back home? Call them turd rollers, because they like to live on any structure like the sewer pipes. One reoccurring theme wherever we're fishing is finding the bait. And that little nugget of local knowledge can set up an awesome trip or break you if you can't find the bait. Bait is so key in every fishery, and it's the first thing we look for when we roll into a new town. I kind of like this, though. I mean, it's the first time you've ever unhooked my fish. I'm not really into this, honestly. Uh, you know, if we're going to be working together, just get used to it. <laughs> I feel a roll reversal here, do you? I'm liking it. Yeah, I bet.
You know, the first day we got here, we used the sand bass. We're fishing on 20, 25 feet of water. We don't have a chance. There is rocks everywhere. A lot of big cauliflowers like um, corals. We must be on full drag to stop the fish and don't break the line. Big groupers fire me up. I, I grew up commercial diving, spear fishing for a living. That was our money fish, the big grouper. And it wasn't just the money fish, it was the bragging fish. What kind of bottoms down there? Uh, it's a, cor a little bit of rock with corals, with cauliflower coral. So, I mean, it goes about this big, you know, on top of the, on top of the rock. So it will cut you pretty good. That's why we need the 200-pound um, the leader so bad. To catch them in 40 feet of water, I, I really didn't believe it. Ali's like, yeah, we're catching these giant grouper in 40, 50 feet of water. Stop a fish like that in that shallow water, fish of a lifetime for us. I know one of the reasons that we like to fish here so much is we like to target that king of the reef. And in this part of the country, the king of the reef is the grouper. When I think of a grouper, I think of a bottom-dwelling species, very powerful, very strong, ambush predator, and one of the most powerful sought-after fish in the ocean as, as far as South Florida goes. Got a fish! Oh, oh. I'm gonna fish. Get him, William. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm going to get him. I'm getting him. Oh, I'm gonna fish. Get another bait down to help you. Yeah, no, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, 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 oh. Leader, it. These grouper here are prolific. They're big and they're in shallow water, and they really have That's no natural nice. predators other than us. Look at that. Now that is the gulf grouper? That's a gulf grouper right there. Oh, it looks a lot like our gag grouper. Yeah. Wow, that is nice. That is gorgeous. Nice fish. Welcome to Baja, Roch. That, that is awesome. And we're in 23 feet of water. Yeah. Blows my mind. Grouper out here, for one, are big in shallow water. Back home, we catch big grouper, no doubt, but they are in deeper water, 200 feet, 100 feet. Looks a lot, a combination of our gag grouper and our black grouper. Basically, where we're gonna be fishing is a golf, uh, golf grouper and uh, broomtail grouper. So we have about 50% chances to catch, you know, any of those two species, but we need to go and get the big ones. This isn't a big one. It is not. Back home, this is, a, this is a nice one. Any day of the week, we get them bigger. And we're gonna let this guy go, right? You guys do all catch and release here. Everything is catch and release here. The thing that makes this place different from a lot of other places in Baja is the awareness of the resource. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. How long you been fishing down here for the groupers? I, 15 years, and uh, you know what? The the, the uh, population of grouper here, I think, is better than when I first came to fish this area. So Julio has really fallen in love, it seems like, with two spots in Baja, and they're not too far apart. One of them is this Abre Ojos, La Bocana area. More fish and bigger size, and that's just because the cooperativas here have been not fishing commercially lately, you know, for the last few years, the groupers. In this area, La Bocana and Abre Ojos, the cooperative is really everything. And what a cooperativa is, is a group of fishermen, generally geographically located. That cooperativa exists because the Mexican government has given them a chunk of land. And this chunk of land exists underwater and they use that chunk of land in the exact same way that a corn farmer in the Midwest uses his dirt. 
Yeah, and you know what? I just asked him a question, you know, why they were taking care of the lobster and the abalone so bad, you know, with his own surveillance and with so many things. But not the groupers. They start doing, and not the groupers. That and they sense. just say it because they have good customers for lobster and abalone, and they pay good. And I say, you know what? I think there is better customers for groupers than, than what you have for abalone. These guys really realize the need to protect it and keep that fishery strong. A lot of places you go, they're just one man for himself. I'm just going to take what I can and too bad for the rest of the people. Here, it's not like that. This is an out of the way place. You know, you can't fly in, you got to drive, you got to want to get here, but the fishing really makes it worthwhile. And the other thing here that I've noticed compared to anywhere else in Baja is the people. The people want you here, they're excited to see you, they take good care of you, you need help with anything. I mean, it, yeah. this is an awesome spot, man. Nothing comes easy when you're grouper fishing. Get up! Oh! Oh! oh I hate bitch. No! Get up! Oh! What's going on, Ranchero? I have no idea. And getting the bite is honestly 25% of the battle. Ali, you got some real estate? Yes, sir. <laughs> I got a good too. The real challenge begins once that guy realizes he's hooked and he wants to jump back into that cave that might be three or four feet deep. That, that's like 10 in a row between that us. One, that one broke me off. For guys that have done a lot of fishing, it's really the pinnacle of bottom fishing. Oh, dude, I think I just had a grouper flash on my bait right at the surface. This is what you want, Rusty. Oh, you got me in the rock. <clears throat> Oh, it's so good, everybody's getting them. <laughs> These don't get old. That's a cute one. Dale pa atrás, Rigo, dale pa atrás, Rigo, dale pa atrás, Rigo. I got him in. Broomtail, no, it's a golf grouper. Oh, you got him, got him big, got him big. Oh, my, 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 my. Watch my run. I don't care. <laughs> you got him, you got him, Rush, you got him, Rush. You got him, you got him too. Double, 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 double. Woo! <laughs> Julio, come grab it. <laughs> nice. Woo! <laughs> nice one, Raj. <laughs> yes! Sir. That is definitely why I came down here. Look at that on your Florida style jig right sick. there. <laughs> Coming into this, my opinion of Mexico was a little jaded. So I gotta come down here and deal with this guy just to catch some nice groupers. Uh, it's usually worth it. I, I would deal with him any day to catch fish like this in 20 feet of water. Thank you, Julio. I've seen zero crime. I've seen nothing but the friendliest people I've ever met in my life. This place is for the future. We need to release the fish. I mean, are we allowed to keep six? No, none. Woo! I think that one's healthy. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh, yeah. good job, guys. That was good awesome. Release, good, good job, release, my friend. Good release. Julio, he loves to fish. He loves to have people around. He loves to be helpful. He loves to be the guy in Baja. Baja is his backyard, you know, and he really wants to do everything he can to show it off. It's a unique place for sure. I fished all over Mexico, all over Baja with you in a lot of places. This is one of my favorites for sure. It There's is. nothing else like it. For groupers, this is the place. We needed to get better bait than just the sand bass. I got a friend who's a pilot who loves to fish. Have him grab a cast net. He flies in literally the next day, and 24 hours later, our whole outlook has changed. You always feel a little better when you have a bait in the well, you know what I'm saying? Watch that rod, bring that rod. Woo, there we go. Beautiful, buddy.